All right, let's talk about our clone stamp tool. I've been referring to it or alluding to it a little bit. This is the tool right over here. And how this tool works is similar to the last tool where uh, the eyeball that we had loaded up from last experiment is still there. So I'm going to hold down the option because we do have to set something that we're going to clone with. And I'm just gonna option click in our hair rate here. So I'm gonna option click and then let go of option. And my cursor currently is 150 pixels and it's a soft brush. So if I move this over, I literally sampled whatever was underneath with a soft edge. So it kind of feathers out. But when I click to place this or to paint with this, it's going to literally stay that same color. It's not gonna do any blending of light or anything else. So, if I continue on, you can see I'm cloning from her hair. You can see where the plus sign is following along. That's where I first set up my clone. So I am giving this poor girl a beard. And every now and then you have to stop and reset your sample point. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna resample right here. And I'm gonna continue giving this poor girl a beard. And you can see it is literally picking up whatever was under the cursor when I sampled or whatever is underneath the plus sign at the time. So right now I'm about to go over real skin and notice it's cloning in real skin or an eyeball, whatever that plus sign is over. It's not doing any blending. It's literally bringing in whatever was underneath my cursor and plopping it down. Um, clearly I need to fix this poor girl. I'll go back up to here. There we go. Um, so again, if we wanted to option click on her eyeball to sample that, we could very easily give her a third eye right here. But again, it is literally putting down the pixels. So as I drive to the right, it's going to start cloning in her hair. So this is, um, you gotta be aware of this behavior. And this is why when you're using this tool, you should kind of have one hand on the option key because you're going to resample quite a bit. If I come down here or set your sample point quite often, um, I'm gonna option click, actually I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller, but I'm gonna option click on some clean skin right here. And then I'm going to attempt to paint that skin over here and notice it's not blurring into her hair. It's literally picking up the pixels that I sampled and covering up. So you have to be careful with this. Obviously her skin tone down here is different than it is up here and it starts to look a little funky, but this is the one that when you need to make a hard edge, you can use this tool. I'll show you a perfect example of this. If I option click right here on her neck and hair and I bring my cursor down, eventually it's gonna fill in. Do you see how it's filling in? I can click and keep pulling down with this. And of course I'm making her neck very weird, but you can see that I was able to give her a hard, because I was literally copying up here, which was neck and then a dark line in hair. I literally was able to copy that all the way down. Um, we're going to watch some videos later that show us how to further tweak these adjustments, but in general, this is a great one when you're getting close to problem areas. You're probably going to want to shift to the clone tool, and you're going to want to shift to a harder, well, slightly harder brush, not a super soft one, because you don't want a lot of that blending. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Again, if I wanted to get rid of this hair, it's really annoying when the last thing that you sampled follows you around, but I could maybe option click right here and then pull this down and kind of clean that up and go forward. Oop. I could option click right here, clean this up, option click down here, clean this up, make my cursor even smaller, Option click on her lip, kind of get that hair cloned out of there. Option click in here, get this piece of hair out of here. Boy, my computer's so slow, I'm not seeing the result until it's almost too late. But I think you get the idea. The, the biggest difference is that this tool 
especially with a hard edge brush, is going to literally copy with no blending. So that's your, oh, look what happened. I've got some, I'm back on the patch layer accidentally, so I have layers above it that are, that's why I'm seeing all those dots. Huh, I think I moved the patch layer accidentally. Again, if you use new layers for all of this, you are always going to be able to change your mind, take it out, change the opacity. Um, you'll have a wide variety of options to make this look the best. Okay, so with the clone tool, I get an exact duplicate. With the healing brush tool, let's do that same practice. We have to option click. When I do this one and I paint, notice how it's blending the two sources. It's making this a lot lighter because her skin tone is a lot lighter up here. Okay, that takes care of the clone tool, clone stamp. And this would be probably the preferred tool for cleaning up spots down here in her neck yet. Maybe cloning some of her hair over top of this necklace maybe, if you could. Not so much. Trial and error. This is a good thing about the undo button and about working on close this picture down. I think it's, we've done enough to this poor girl. And I'm going to show, oh, shoot. Well, we do need that doesn't have eyeballs all over the place. So I'll be back with our next video in just a second.